Just remember all the evil that you do to me will come back on you. It will circle around. So trying to get me down and getting people not to see stuff, it will come back on you. It will. I've been on this earth long enough to see that happen a million times over. And the people are guilty, guilty, guilty as sin. And eventually people will be held accountable for the stuff that they do. This story right here, I touched on last night on a different platform. And I wanted to talk about it here because it's absolutely insane. But this is a sociopath and the cops hired him because they thought he was a perfect fit for their department. Obviously. Um, you would have to be a rapist to fit the criteria of what cops want. Have no emotion and be a brutal piece of crap and kidnap women. Now, this case is really interesting because kidnapping is involved, but yet he didn't get a kidnapping charge. I would like to know why this did not happen. We're going to go through it. We're going to show you what men think is normal and why they wouldn't even think twice about throwing that in there. Okay, so Colorado police officer texted women after alleged rape. Can we at least stay friends? Yes. Yes. This one has every flag. I mean, everything that these guys do under the sun when they make excuses. And you know they're lying. And if you see the lies here and you hear it from other men, know damn well they're lying. They're ball face lying out of their mouth. It's really easy. I don't know of any women that do this, but on the female perpetrators, um, I don't see them. Um, on the cases that I've gone through, I haven't seen them go through this whole like, oh, I got kids. I would never do that. I don't know. I haven't seen it, but maybe it's out here, but I haven't read it. When I pull the female cases up, they're kind of getting busted and they're just like, uh, they deny it happens, but I haven't read this whole drama fest. This was this. This is your typical socio, classic socio type of dude, right? So, here he goes. And obviously, he's religious, too. So, okay. A Colorado police officer has been charged with sexually assaulting a woman who said she was incapable of giving consent and then texted her the day after the alleged incident, God is very upset with me the way that I acted. Here we go. And does that tell you that he doesn't know what he did? Doesn't it tell you that he knows what he did? And the, I'm going to tell you this right now. It's not that he feels bad about doing it to her. He'll tell you at the end what he really feels freaked out about. Okay. Commerce City Police Officer Michael Glenn Parker was arrested last week in connection with the alleged October 2023 20, incident at his Fort Lipton home. He has been charged with felony sexual assault on a victim incapable of giving consent. But where's the kidnapping charge? Do you not want to put it in here? Because watch, we're going to get to it. Parker's attorney did not respond to a phone or electronic inquiry from CBS News Colorado. Commerce, Commerce City plays Parker on administrative leave without pay. What does he look like? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, he looks real friendly. Okay. Why is his face all up like that? Do they tell him to, they're like, put your chin up, dude. Yo. Okay. According to the arrest affidavit, Parker and the unidentified woman first connected on the dating app Hinge. Did she see a picture first? Okay, so the woman came to Colorado last October to visit a friend and agreed to meet Parker at a bar. Okay, so they went to a public place. The woman's friend told police that they had shots at the bar and the friend suggested the officer could have drugged her friend at some point. When it was time to leave, Parker offered to give them a ride to the friend's home. So, okay, right here. Now, depending on her level of intoxicity here, um, uh, we look at this portion right here, like maybe she was capable of consenting to this portion, right? Um, I'm agreeing to go into your vehicle to take me to my friend's home. Okay, right? 
You say that. You agree. That's all she agreed to, right? Watch what happens next. This is kidnapping. He drove the two women to his home. In Fort Lipton, 40 minutes away, and he later texted, And that's my fault. I just didn't want the night to end with you. That's all. That doesn't even make sense. And that's my fault. I just didn't want the night to end with you. That's all. Okay. But this portion right here is kidnapping. He drove the two women to his home. Not to the friend's home. To give them a ride to the friend's home. But instead, see? But instead, he went somewhere else where they did not consent to. To his home. That is kidnapping. That is actually the most common form of kidnapping that men do. And they rarely get in trouble for this. It gets brought up in crimes when you'll see it. It happens in rape things like this. And they'll throw it in at random. Like they don't always put it in there. Um, but this is a clear cut kidnapping. That's what they do. Okay. So and in uh, what other cases? Oh, murder cases. Right. So they'll have a thing like this. Ted Bundy, he's a Ted Bundy, right? Hey, get in my car, you know, I'm injured, you know, I'm giving you know, some bullshit. Gets in the car, and then what does he do? Does some completely different thing, right? Then they die, then they might throw it in there, oh, kidnapping. Now, if this was a child, right, imagine this. So it's just like him going up to a kid and going, ah, your mom said this, and blah, blah, blah. I will take you there. I will take you there, kid, right? Starts off like that. The kid gets into the vehicle. Where does he go? Oh, he goes to his house or somewhere else, right? And then the kid gets harmed somehow. They could live. Uh, there's been cases of that. Um, no, it is not. The, the very most popular form of kidnapping is not with a gun and being tied up and thrown into the back of a trunk. It's actually this right here. Why men do this? Uh, they get enabled to be able to do it because they just wrote this, which tells you the people on the case also must just randomly kidnap women like this and see no issue with it to just overlook that. Yeah, so that's the very common way that I get kidnapped and I got kidnapped. So nobody's making up kidnapping. This is quite common for men particularly to do. Now, have women done it? Maybe. Maybe they've done it with kids and other things, right? But this is a very common form of kidnapping. And I was actually talking about that stupid crap from kids. You know, I was like, they only talked about this one variation of kidnapping. And technically, you don't need a gun to you and be tied up. And no, you don't die. And no, you not, you're not held for ransom. But you might get raped. This is definitely one form of it. This is the most common form of it right here. I'm going to take you somewhere. I'm going to rape you. And I'm going to just let you go afterwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's a cop. So he should know. He should know kidnapping. At Parker's home, his alleged victim, she said, uh, said she did not remember walking around. The last memory she had was being in Michael's room, laying on his bed and his penis inside, and she barely remembered it. And the next day she had said her genitals hurt and she might have had sex and wasn't completely positive. Um, Okay, so I had another case of this. It's like, you might remember the intro of the situation and then the next day and you're like, what? Yeah, uh, but some, you know what actually happens a lot of times in cases like even like this right here? Uh, the woman will act normal afterwards and still they, may, they might talk to the guy because it's so confusing. The reason why you would probably talk to the guy anyway afterwards, so I could speak on one case of this. Um, that it's just really confusing about the entire situation because it's not like the like when you have reference to other rape cases uh, that may have happened to you, that is in a different uh, framework here, right? So it's like, oh, we met up at a bar and we were hanging out, we were having fun, and then, you know, I remember him just taking me somewhere, and then we were hanging out at his house, and then the next day it was like, what? Yeah. So the, it, which would be different than me walking down the street, hanging out and some guy grabbing me and dragging me to behind a liquor store, right? Different, different, you know, things, but they're both rape. They're both calculated situations 
they're both predators. The predators are exactly the same, basically. Um, but yeah, the framework around it was like, um, I don't know, you know, and you just kind of like psh, with that thing. Mm -hmm. This is very common. The woman underwent a rape examination and provided a sample to be tested for drug facilitated sexual assault. According to the Fort Lupton police arrest affidavit. The following day, the woman and the officer began texting. Parker wrote, I felt like we clicked. Oh, he, he felt like he clicked with some woman that was uh, under the influence. You gotta love this. You were not all there. We totally clicked, girl. Ha ha ha. I told you what to do. I made you do stuff and we clicked. This guy is something else. Okay, during the text exchange, the woman confronted Parker about what happened, saying she thought that they had sex for a minute, but but don't really remember. She asked if he used a condom, and he goes, no, we didn't. You mean, no, I didn't, and I just do what I want when I want, and I don't care about you at all, and I'm just going to do it, like Nike. Just do it. Just do it. And he, so he, he's, okay, so here he's a harm to self and others, right? Because, uh, number one, he could get her pregnant. Maybe he was trying to. He could spread an STD. He could have gotten an STD from her, right? Um, he's also raping right here. So, um, yeah, so he's a straight up sociopath. That, the disorder is not separated from a sociopath, okay? Only sociopaths do this. But it's interesting. So he, he's going to go into this whole thing. I, now he's going to go bring God into it. I'm praying to God. I'm praying that God will touch your heart. I was like, you touch me in the worst way, you jerk. I'm praying that God will, t God will touch your heart, the victims, enough to forgive me and let us move past this. I'm so sorry for everything. I hope God will let you forgive me for raping you, girl. This is what they're doing to us on the platform, dude, you guys. That we're supposed to be forgiving all these guys. And we're supposed to say only nice things about them. We're supposed to sit here and go, oh my God, he's a wonderful dude. You cannot say all men are rapists, dude. You cannot say all these guys are rapists. Oh God, no. Oh no, you can only say nice things. You cannot get angry at this. And you need to forgive that guy and these dumb women that are promoting that crap kiss my butt so this is the predator move this is the sociopath behavior and women want to be sociopaths so that's your thing um that's not my universe so you could take that shit out of here the woman responded i wasn't coherent enough to remember anything you just admitted to rape and you literally just admitted that we had sex which is something i didn't agree to and then he texts saying I swear to God, I didn't do that to you. <laughs> what is that? He totally admitted it. Now he's saying this. So this is what they say in the public arena when they question these guys. This is they start doing all this. Uh, God, Jesus, he's going to throw in his daughter. I love this one because this is the so typical thing. We got to throw in a woman here and our kids, right? If they have them. It's either I'm going to throw in a woman, my wife, my kids, my friends. I know her, ask her, you know, we don't give a shit about these women, okay? I swear on my daughter's life, I'm not that person. I mean, he just, what is that? And, and, and let me tell you something on this. What I've been finding out on these cases, on a lot of them, is that okay these guys actually are not different at home okay a lot of these kids are getting molested at home and when you find this person like this it must be someone that wants to go throw on their kids up in here they need to be taken away from their kids um and also have their daughters question how they're going on because a person with this pd cannot change how they are okay they can manipulate other people but their inner self of how they feel about women and how they should be um does not change okay so they would have their daughter um they would be raising that daughter in a really bad way okay they would be setting her up to be groomed and doing what daddy says and he may have touched her too and then he's like i swear to god i didn't do that to you okay so i would be really scared about this daughter somebody needs to question the daughter 
Is he around the daughter? Has he touched the daughter? What has he said to the daughter? Has he talked sexually inappropriate to the daughter? What has he done? He does not believe in agency. He's anti-agency. He believes that he's the man of the house because he's a Jesus freak and that he could do whatever he wants and that women need to submit to him. So this is a problem. And a lot of kids are getting molested by their parents and family members. And they're kind of ignoring that dynamic and it, like I said, it popped up in our case when I found out the perpetrator's boss is having the predator around their own kids. I'm like, this is not happening. So I would never, ever in my life do that to someone, even though he just admitted he did, right? That's how he's talking. It's like the separate human. And he's just a pathological liar. Okay, so then he goes, he went on to say, I swear to God, I didn't take advantage of you. I didn't do that. And then this is what he cares about. Not that he cares about that he harmed another human. Nothing, nothing, nothing. This is it right here. I would never jeopardize my career. This is all they say. And then they start in with the cancel culture thing, okay? Then they start crying cancel culture because they're little baby brats. That's the thing about sociopaths. They're like stuck as a child. And this is them having a fit. They're like, oh my God, I'm going to lose all my power. Yeah, that's them. Mm -hmm. And then they want to mock it. And then they want to call us abusers. I'm like, wow, I didn't go rape anybody. That's amazing. And nobody died around me that I didn't kill anybody. Um, yeah, so they want to be mega bullies because they're totally effed in the head. This is just one scrambled egg brain of a guy. But you could tell he's a religious freak. That's where male supremacy comes from, you guys. It's being indoctrinated through that. I just pulled up the Diddy thing. That story is dark as shit. Let me finish this portion. Parker was released from Wheel County Jail on 25K bond. So he's already out. Is he around his kid? Oh my God. He brought his kid into him being a rapist on some thing here. He is due in court in April. The same month, police arrests Parker. Several women testified before a committee at the state legislature pressing for passage of a bill that would place state regulations on dating apps. Okay, I was not the first one he had done this to, and this dating app was his hunting ground. Yeah, I told you I go the I had I had probably fucking Israel keys, man. I don't know what the hell I don't know where what what site it was off of is a thing about it. And then there was a whole bunch of other people. One of them I was like, I don't know if that's a guy that is on this crime show. Like, I'm sitting here looking at these things. I go, I don't even know. Because you go on one date with the guy. And then you, you you figure, yeah, they're probably a perpetrator. And then, like, some show come on. And it's like, oh, yeah, he was using dating app thing. And I go, oh, my God. I go, that might have been the guy. He was totally gross. You know? I was like, I don't know. I didn't get raped on those dating things. Thank God. But I had one just totally plant one on my mouth and I was going to barf. He just ra at random did that. And he was so perverted. It was so gross. Okay, he says, I was not the first one he had done this to. And the dating app was his hunting ground. And then who says she raped, he, she was raped 12 years ago in Florida by a man she met on a dating app. My story is not unique. And another woman, Vanessa, testified that in 2003, she too was sexually assaulted by a man she met on a dating app. She said he was a police officer who ransacked her home and intimidated her with multiple handguns. The cop thing. I like how they're focused on the dating app, which, yes, I agree with. Because, holy crap, the dating sites are just... No. Men are nowhere near as in danger as women are on these platforms. and Because originally they didn't have the apps. It was just on a website. And all the girls were like, let's go try these dating sites out. And then we were, like, all into it. And then, you know... And I was like, how come everybody I get is a fucking dud? They're gross. They're disgusting. And they lie. And they're all fucking narcissists. Like, the whole thing about it. Um, and then they're trying to get something. Like, it was a whole other thing. And I was like, no way. Um, but I got lucky. I mean, uh, the ATM Israel type of guy there, we're not sure. It could be him. It could be somebody else. Uh, that wasn't... I don't... I don't... Mm, I don't believe it was on a dating site, though. But I could be wrong. But I don't recall that. But I did go on a date over there from a dating site with somebody else. Okay, so they said they're scheduled to vote March 11th on whether to advance SB 24011 out of committee. Okay, but what about these cops, okay? The cops have been 
going on apps okay so this would have been an app today but they were on caller me okay they were on a site like that okay where they get their ass beat and um yeah and then they were on back page they were on okay obviously they were on all these other dating sites that came out like them cheating on their wives and all that stuff they they had been going into people's businesses and trying to date strippers they were going into all these different things, right? And I brought it up to law enforcement that they were doing this conduct. And I told you they made an excuse for them that they could do whatever they want. It's extracurricular activities. But they're off here preying on women in this way. And then as you see, they abuse their power and then they go rape everybody, right? So that's that that's a problem. And then so when government came into back page, I go, wait a minute, you guys didn't even tell everybody that half a government is on that site getting girls. I mean, like, what the hell? Yeah, so it's almost like their own cover up in this shit show to for political reasons to make them seem like they're saving somebody and they didn't save a goddamn person. Right. And then they're sitting there botching investigations that have to do with rich men, because that's who does the human trafficking, because they're the ones that started that in the country. Right. The wealthy men um because they owned everything and it's a power and control thing so oh as far as the p diddy thing i wanted to add this in there because i was like holy crap of course i go do the video and i go do research during it uploading and i was like did i really just find this because i knew the catholic school thing was gonna be a really bad thing but so i just thought oh let me see if they had any bus stations at the catholic school there yes lo and behold the, the principal um, and some other guy were molesting kids at the school while he was there. I had to double check. I'm like, that's the same school, right? That's the same school because it says in the Bronx. And then they were putting addresses of the, the priest and stuff who did it. And then one fled to Ireland or something. And then he got to get off on this whole thing. And he tried to use him being gay as an excuse to not come at him. I was like, oh, no, 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 honey. That's not, that's not, that's not a, a, a pass to rape kids. So one of the main problems back then was the gays had to hide in the closet, okay? Then they told him, oh, it's a choice. And then, but beyond that, uh, that does not okay touching children, so they were doing that and they turned into these mega these certain ones were turning into these mega monster male supremacists that hated women and started targeting us to hell and that is indoctrinated from the church right but the school itself is a male supremacist church uh, school where they segregated men to be with each other and then they all raped each other like the boys raped each other and then the priests would rape the boys and so it just became this normal behavior of them being a bunch of pedo rapists and they normalized it but what i found interesting about the story too on top of it i go there was actually some kids in 1988 that said hey this is bad which i have to commend somebody in this story because i go maybe it was just that the parents were actually decent parents i don't think they were completely decent because you put them into a male supremacist school of fucking Catholics. Um, but beyond that, they knew enough to sit there and go and report it. But they also didn't use the word rape in the story. That's what I said. They didn't use the word rape on boys. Then they were using sexual assault, sexual abuse, all this stuff. And they didn't use it properly. And they just didn't like to say the word rape just like now, right? They take it away from the hashtag. They don't want you to see the word rape because they're all rapists, right? Because it's not a good thing because they're all going to get out it. They know they're rapists. It's not a thing that they don't know they're rapists. But they think it's fine. They think raping each other is fine. And so then some other child victim from back then came forward and tried to sue him in 2021 or something. The priest that ran away. Again, it gets passed off. I have no idea what the hell's going on with that. And that guy's like, it's just a plot to come at me because I'm gay. I was like, no way. No way. And so you have to explain why Diddy came out as a rapist little monster from that place right there. There is a little bit more to the story for somebody coming out like that. There's a portion in the story where it doesn't give me enough information. Like, 
I know that the school, it says that it's like grade 6 through 12. Okay, well, that's later. That's that's a later point. So it's like Act 2. We'll call it like Act 2 in the childhood portion because you need the portion from infant to about 10 or so, right? And it's just not there. So I would have to do other research. I don't know if you ever talked about it somewhere or something like that. But there's a lead up into this particular thing and then the catholic thing would definitely be the problem it tells me kind of that the mom is like this overly religious person that would sit there and throw her son into this private you know freaking all boys school for catholics you know so it gives me that much so it could tell me maybe she's an abuser maybe something's in here for him to be this way but that would be the addition. And that was actually the grossest thing I read. I was like, that's why I said, I go, his story's weird. I wasn't even expecting all that. I don't think I could have pulled that out. I just know he was running around with crosses, but I used to run around with crosses too, but I didn't go to a Catholic school, but I used to run around with crosses and my aunt was Catholic. And then she gave me a cross and I used to wear that one all the time. It was more of a Catholic type of cross. Um, but it didn't, I didn't, I, I was baptized Catholic, but I didn't go to a Catholic you know, thing. So it was kind of interesting. I just, it just was kind of shocking because I was like, I'm expecting a whole different background, like a whole different, I just didn't know that that was interesting. I go, well, you're validating what we're talking about. The worst part of it is that there were so many schools like this where the priests and stuff molested all the kids. Now, if they were molesting all the kids, just, you know, at random, they're teaching them something, right? So they're indoctrinating boys into male supremacy. But on top of that, they groomed them and they didn't believe really in that you could rape kids. Also, another thing with that, they didn't, uh, the parents did not really think that men would touch other men. They felt safe with other men. Um, they do the same thing with feeling safe with other females. I'm not safe with other females. Are you crazy? They're a bunch of bullies and they try to get me raped and shit. Um, it's not a necessary a thing where I, I'm going to get raped by them, but they may set up rape on me and I have been touched by one um, or an attempted thing to that. And then there's been others that have attempted to try to do stuff, but their conduct is more of I'm going to injure you or get you raped by another human, like another man and out you and get you killed or target you and want to beat you up because you're saying that some guy I want to have sex with did such and such, right? So they are quite a danger because they're cultists and um, they have ASPD as well. And they are the majority um, of females that are acting in this manner and they sex shame and they are targeting um, what they're calling human trafficking, which is not human trafficking. They're targeting sex work. And that's a major problem. Your husband is a human trafficker. You have to do what he tells you. You may sit there at home and tell him what to do, but he's actually controlling your life. You have no freedom. You know, it's like stuff like that. Um, yeah, we're talking about the Tim Ballard thing. Yeah, the Tim Ballard thing. Uh, yeah, the wife. Yeah, uh, so my one of my listeners, yeah, br brought that up that the... Uh, uh, that she's involved and she wants to stick by because of finance or doing things for financial reasons. I, yeah. And so I have found in these cases with these women that pretend that their husband is the saint and that they're going to stand by their man. I have found in these cases that the women have been just as abusive and or worse abusers than the perpetrator we're talking about. So when they started asking, like, okay, such as in, like, the Depp case and stuff, they were asking these women stuff, and some of those women are horrible abusers, and they were worse than Depp. And then they wanted to threaten violence on another woman, and I go, oh, that's interesting. So you're going to go ask those type of people, how is that guy? It's the same thing as asking Danny Masterson, how is that guy, to that other girl, right? Philip, those people, whatever. Um, because she's an abuser. And so the abuser finds that guy totally fine because they, they're the same. They're the same terrible human. So when you're asking women things like that, I don't take their word as anything. 
I look at them if they say something like that, and I know that guy's an abuser. I look at her and I go, I know she's an abuser too. That happened in multiple cases. I could bring somebody else up that I believe is a total bully. Yes. Yeah, so, oh no, that person's totally fine. Uh-huh. But I actually think that that person may actually be worse in some ways than this other person. Because I had a good situation with the other person. So I was like, I didn't have, they didn't, okay, to my knowledge, that person did not come and bully me. If they were a part of any of that stuff, it would be behind the scenes and they would be a total jerk for doing that. Because I never did anything to those people. But like I said, I had a decent situation with those people. But yeah, I do believe he abused a bunch of people. Yeah. So I'm not even taking that stance like, oh, he was nice to me. So I think all these girls are lying. No, it was actually quite the opposite. I go, oh, I could see how that happened because he has this personality. But he wasn't, he was not, he was not this vindictive bully to me. Now, see, what would happen is if we brawled, maybe, he's going to be a terror. Now, I have some other guys like this where they've been a terror to people the whole time. And I've had no issue with them. And all of a sudden, guess what's going to happen the minute that you have a have a falling out? Let's just say you have a falling out with a person like that. They're going to be dangerous. They're going to do those things to you. And so I'm trying to look at this thing because it's like, even when I'm in a brawl with somebody, I've even talked about my exes and one that's a perpetrator. I still talk to him. Do you see me trying to like take him out or anything? I'm not doing these things. I'm not... Uh, a physical threat in that way and I don't like keep going on and just like bullying somebody and doing these things I've talked about his things um and I've said that they uh helped me at least in the story portion because they they had me use that I mean there was a whole thing to that um but no I I've never harmed anybody I've never done anything with my exes and I don't even that was actually the first time I actually started talking about all my exes I was like, I was just going to go down this line because I never talk about anybody. Um, but no, I was just talking about how like they were all terrible, except for like this one. He was like probably the best one, but then yet yeah, he still was not good. Okay, so um, he, wasn't an, he wasn't an abuser. It's just that there was other things to that. Um, but beyond that, yeah, the rest, there was rapists in here um, all over the place. And then so these men want to sit there and pre, pre, play pretend like they're not the abuser. Um, they are, and they're being called out, and they have a problem with being called out because they've never been in trouble before. They just like, you know, running around. They're so happy, enjoying harming everybody and enjoying being a bully to men and women. And then when you call them out, all of a sudden it's like, oh, shit, and then they start bullying you. Yeah, they're bullies. They do it to me. Why would I want to go around doing that to other people? That's horrible. They should be getting arrested for doing that. I wouldn't, and I don't promote people to do that to other people on here. Actually, the way I talk about it, I think it's just an automatic thing where people don't automatically go and want to do that because the way I'm talking about it. I don't even need to say, oh, don't go target those people because they're dissecting the problems. I'm trying to get people to see the problems. We know they're a problem, but we're also at the same time trying to fix something and to, that's not the way to fix anything. And what does it do for me to have people run over and try to go attack people that have attacked me? Now, they shouldn't be working with these people, but that's a, that's a different thing. We're not saying go harm people and take them out. That, no. Government wants to take me out because they're a bunch of pedo rapists. They seem to look at victims as being terrorists. You would be a terrorist to a rapist. Because to a rapist socio, uh, it's a threat to their power. And then they're going to get thrown in prison. So then they want to kill you. Yeah, so then they do things like that. And then try to remove your money and throw you in the street and do some weird shit like that. And so that's them trying to say that they're against pedophiles. No, it isn't. That's them actually promoting it and saying, if you tell on us, we're going to hurt you. We're going to really hurt you. That message is loud and clear, dudes. Oh, and I wanted to tell off, so I didn't want to forget this part. So as far as that Catholic school thing, okay, so this would be a great time for them to do some research on all the kids that came out of that school because on any of these places. So we know the kids were, well, I don't think that like the, those military type schools are a good 
thing to go off of because I, the kids had problems before they went there, right? And at this Catholic school thing, um, they may have, they mm, more than likely had some problems before then, but they weren't like thrown into a thing. But maybe that's why they did get thrown into this thing. I'm not really sure. But they should actually do some research by looking at all the men that came out of that school, right? And seeing how many of them became rapists, how many of them have been accused of rape and domestic violence and other sexual assaults or and criminal behavior. Because holy crap, this dude came out this atrocious. And there just has to, there's an explanation for it. And it's like when I go through these cases and I'm going through the childhood portion, that's a big area right there, that Catholic thing. However, you kind of need something a little bit before that to be this shitty. And I'm trying to figure out like what what is the additional thing that happened before going to that school? That's what you need to know to then open up this door for then this behavior. Because you need that explanation. And when you know that explanation, then you know what to tackle and then to not allow anymore. Okay. This is what you need to know. That's how you actually stop this problem. Not the death penalty and trying to like kill everybody off and going, we hate pedos and this thing and that thing. You need to stop creating the monsters and you need to find the, the, the source of what's going on right there. And I see the source. It's just that earlier portion. I don't know what happened there. And you need to know what that happened there. And it could be the mom's totally abusive. It totally could be. Uh, she was a single mom, I guess, at that point. Or I don't know. Maybe she got a stepfather. You know, there's, I don't know. Because the father died. So I was like, oh, the military diet died. So I can't use it. I mean, you can't go, oh, explanation. Um, it wasn't in a good way, but he uh, he's too young to really, you know, be in, you know, have this thing going on. So I was like, I honestly, maybe because if the mom's okay with the dad being connected with the drug dealer, uh, maybe you, you could kind of suspect some stuff here, but it could just be a whole different thing because the, the childhood portion was nothing that I would have expected for his behavior right now. Um, though it makes sense reading it. It's just my thinking was elsewhere on it, which is interesting. So I was like, oh, yes, we know about the Catholic school thing. We know about the Catholics touching all the kids. So right here, since you know what happened there, you need to talk to all the kids that are now adults today. They're in their 50s, 60s, because there were some stories that happened earlier than even that 80s portion from that place. And I was like, yeah, they should talk to all of them and people that know them and how many of them turn criminal and sexually assaulted people. And a lot of them probably still haven't even got busted today. OK, because at that time, if you normalize it, and you didn't tell anybody, then you have a high potential of being a ditty. OK, the ones that told um, it still doesn't tell you that they didn't turn out to be total male supremacists because I keep finding these victims where they're like, I'm a victim. And then they're like, we believe in raping women and treating them like shit and doing this whole thing. And those are the things you need to look at. And it is being taught through that, that religion, those religions and a school that's all for men is a male supremacist entity. And yeah, I know they had female schools too, but it's nowhere near what this garbage is going on right here. Because they were not taught to be leaders. They were taught to submit to men and do as men told them. It's a whole different curriculum, dude. It's a whole different thing. And them touching each other back then was totally okay. They didn't stop it. So it's like a neglect. It's like a child neglect, okay? Where you're watching kids molest each other and you're just saying, oh, it's just guy stuff. So that, that's a component to this thing. And so I don't know where these idiots are coming off here going, we need to just kill all these people that are doing that. And then yet they go to church, right? You go to church, you go to church. He's a Catholic schoolboy. What do you mean he didn't go to church? He went to church and he started touching everybody. So, and he started doing criminal behavior here. It makes so much sense. They're like, he's touching everybody's butt. He's doing all these things. They go, oh crap. You already see, okay, so conduct, when you sexualize something or start doing something, it's kind of something that happens in that childhood area, right? Really young, not even at age 12, younger. But somebody's doing some shit where you're just normalizing it and touching your butt and running around doing this stuff to other guys at random. Kevin Spacey, we talk about him a lot because the story's totally in the open. Uh, his father, 
Okay, they, that guy molested those kids. And he did a lot of these things, and that was very normalized, and he's running out raping everybody, okay? So, that, that, there's, there's something there. And then, so we have proof that these guys got busted for touching kids there. But only a few kids came forward. Only a few. Um, but that behavior, what happens is, when somebody touches you as a kid, and you start thinking it's normal, other kids start doing it. It's just like, oh, so it's a, and you just do it to other people, right? Nobody's stopping it. Nobody's stopping it. And they start molesting each other. And they just, oh, it's horseplay. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I was reading that in the story and I go, oh my God. And then, but you got to look at the story even deeper because the people that are involved in the story all got molested because what person would tell you as an adult, oh, it's just horseplay. That means he likes you. Okay. That is somebody that also got molested or raped to be going on like that, okay? So there's a lot of people. It's not just one guy. And yes, you're guilty by association because the only people that hang out with each other that act like that are other rapists. I, who would hang out with somebody that keeps raping you? Raping each other and you're like, ah, eh, you know, it's my bros, dude. Yeah, ha. Uh... Yes, and the conduct of how they've been talking about women and doing crap and their buddies sitting there raping other girls as such as one sitting there preying on women on set. And then I see them all doing stuff. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's going to be a victim. Uh, no. Generally, men don't like women. Um, mostly in the, in the, 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 the male supremacists don't like women. Okay, the male supremacists do not like women. They're seen as a vessel to uh, get children to keep up male supremacy, right? Okay, so they would separate them in that way. You would have to question. I was like questioning this even last night. I was thinking about it. I go, I don't know if there was like a purposeful act for these gay men to sit there and make this private school like these private schools and only indoctrinate all these boys into their bullshit like if it's a purposeful act to sit there and be able to touch them all like on purpose and try to indoctrinate them into liking only men and hating women because they are coming out that way all of them and i'm sitting there thinking about it there may be the the so we know they're sociopaths okay so they're criminal behavior and it's very calculated you have to kind of break down like what is the is there more to the story like more to the plots of that whole thing because we're just unroll we're rolling out like the truth of everything right and we're going through the history and yeah things have been manipulated all over the place oh my god oh we made these laws for that we were totally for you but the reality is the public didn't let anybody go by that <laughs> Yeah, okay, so that's the bullshit, okay? So we cannot go by historical laws or anything like that because the reality is, even if they said, oh, we made it legal for everybody to rape 12-year-olds, the the reality in that what was actually taking place could be, oh, they were raping infants the whole time. We didn't really do anything. Yeah. So I don't know... You have to think about what is the purpose to separate men and keep them separate from females and sit there and indoctrinate them completely differently for male supremacy. They got a whole different thing, ladies, a whole different thing. And that's why I'm saying I go, I don't know the purposeful act where they just wanted them to be all with men, um, really, and then just to rape the women to, to have babies because they're doing that right now. And that's not a person that likes women at all. Not at all, but their cult women will do anything. They tell them whatever and they just run with it, right? Like a bunch of abuser, dumb idiots. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. They, they're like, we don't believe in agency, ladies. We don't. We don't believe in agency at all. We're supposed to get raped, right? Yeah. How can you say you don't live by Christian rules? And um, that anti-abortion thing is all about religion. And I was like, oh, okay, our country here's just really thrown it to us. We're rapists and we're fucking religious. We're a Christian pedo nation, okay? Like, they're loud and clear, dude. They're into kids, dude. And they try to go against this, but they're absolutely into rape and they're into children. They want to touch them. And then they have their woman sit there and defend their rapist husband. You gotta love it, dude. 
I go, there's no way in hell I'm going to defend a rapist. I don't care if male or female. Some fucking rapist guy. I was like, my husband's out touching all the women. I was like, he's a good man, though. Ha ha ha. What the hell? You guys are on drugs. Like, I don't know. Maybe they are. Maybe, like, these. some of these religious people are hardcore addicts, dude. I don't even know. They're, like, the worst people ever. And their women are the biggest bullies ever. They send them out. You know, like, the guy's not even mad about a strip club, you know, down the street. But they send their crazy woman after him to go shut it down you know it's like oh we can't have this here because my husband's gonna go there <laughs> some bullshit like she has to be like this like catcher for her husband it's like um i can't control him and it's if it's by my house he's gonna go cheat on me you know this thing i go well man maybe you should get a different guy um nobody should feel like that you know what i mean it's his fault if that guy wants to be a loser, let him be a loser. You know, it's like that thing. Um, there, there's a whole thing to this. But the but the cult women are the protectors. They're the danger, man, because these guys could not go on without the enabler woman. You're their mom. You're their wife. You're their mom. You're their wife. So these guys could not have gone on this long unless you enabled them to be this way. It, that's just it. So those those Christian women are really big on making women lose their careers and jobs. And so it's not uncommon for us to just see this here where these women are totally going at each other because they're big time bullies. Bullies. Bullies all day long. I did not go after women's jobs and try to get them fired and get them, you know, I'm better here. Get rid of this woman. Yeah, these idiots. They're, no, they're big time bullies. They're bullies. Like that's their conduct. Bullies bullies like they're all out like there's like no good person in these stories none of them they've all had allegations of being terrible humans so this thing uh, not not me i've never done that to anybody no way um if somebody needed to lose their job it was actually because somebody was a perpetrator or doing something to harm others on the job and in which case no i would not enable that and no you should not enable that kind of conduct and nobody should be acting that way on sets regardless of whatever your problems are um so but women have been really big on going after women's jobs and trying to get them to lose money they've disempowered themselves a million times over but they're cult freaks and they're going by male supremacists that's their programming so their job is to go after and hit our careers and not give a shit about our careers and let men go rape everybody and cry about their careers. Like, does this make sense? Does this make sense? Brain dead, bot, cultist. You know what I mean? It's like, what do you say to them? They're, they're vile, dude. Like, who the hell goes and tries to make women lose money? You do not enable that crap. But that's what they're doing. Oh, well, I feel. It's like, I don't give a shit what you feel. It's not your life. Leave people alone. Nobody's harming you nobody's harming you and they took part of all those things to harm me oh my god who goes into my house and into my clothing into my closet and starts looking at my clothes you have a fucking mental problem again these people when they start going on like that with their power and control problems should be handed a mental health pamphlet stop being bullies stop bullying other girls Yes, you're abusing your power. Mostly celebrity females that want to be bullies to other people that are not even in the industry. Or people that are in the industry, but do not have the same power that you do where the media comes and talks to you 24-7. You do. That's you abusing your power. You're being bullies. Get a life.